In this video, we will discuss several issues related to quality control at preprint servers. We begin with the question, who can upload a preprint? Anyone can upload a preprint. However, it's worth noting that a preprint cannot contain just anything. It must be an unpublished scientific paper, and it must be within the scope of the server to which it is submitted. The scope of material accepted varies widely by server. As a few examples, BioArchive accepts preprints from the biomedical and life sciences. MedArchive accepts preprints detailing medical, clinical, and health-related research. Preprints.org and OSF preprints accept work from all scientific fields. Preprint servers also place requirements on manuscript content. Some servers accept all types of scholarly papers, whereas others have more strict requirements. As two examples, BioArchive states, research articles reporting new, confirmatory, or con contradictory findings may be posted. BioArchive is intended for rapid sharing of new research results defined as experimental, mathematical, or computational work. Manuscripts that solely summarize existing knowledge or present narrative theories are inappropriate, as are term papers, book excerpts, and undergraduate dissertations. Archive, on the other hand, accepts scholarly papers in specific scientific disciplines. So what kind of quality control happens during preprint submission? During the submission of a preprint to a preprint server, new submissions undergo a brief quality control screening process that usually takes less than 24 hours. Usually, before being posted, each submission is screened to determine whether it looks like a scientific paper. Note that some servers post preprints prior to this moderation process. Either way, the screening process usually includes checks for the following. Content being within the scope of the preprint server's focus, offensive and or non-scientific material, material that poses a health or biosecurity risk, text overlap compared to other reports, usually with text overlap detection software. In some cases, this process can also include checks for data and or code availability, and in some cases, checks for author background. To compare the screening processes at various preprint servers, you can visit the ASAP Bio website. It's also worth noting that in many cases, the screening process is performed by large, committed groups of volunteers. For example, at BioArchive, affiliates screen submitted material. And at Archive, moderators perform a screening process for all submissions. Now, on the other side of the coin, what kind of quality control does not happen during preprint submission? Although preprints undergo a brief screening process, this process is not peer review. Critically, the following points are not assessed during submission to preprint servers. Whether the submission has been deposited elsewhere, the quality of the results reporting and interpretation, and research integrity, robustness of the experimental methods, and the importance or the validity of the findings. So what happens if issues arise with a posted preprint? If a pre preprint posted on a preprint server has major issues following community comments, preprint servers have mechanisms in place to address these issues. Some of the issues that may prompt a withdrawal include the following. Scientific misconduct, such as plagiarism or data fabrication, serious errors that cannot be remedied by the authors posting a correction to the preprint, and copyright violations. If a preprint server withdraws a preprint, this is an example of a banner that might appear at the top of that preprint indicating its withdrawal. Note, however, that in many cases, preprints may be withdrawn but not completely removed. We've discussed the basic screening process that occurs when a preprint is submitted to a preprint server. Now we turn to the question, do preprint servers differ from general purpose repositories? The answer is yes. Preprint servers do differ from general purpose repositories, such as Zenodo and Open Science Framework. 
On this slide, we lay out some similarities and differences between preprint servers and general purpose repositories. Like most preprint servers, general purpose repositories are DOI issuing repositories. Critically, general purpose repositories place fewer requirements on the content and scope of submitted materials than do preprint servers. Specifically, there are no or few restrictions on file size or format, and no or few restrictions on scientific field for which content is relevant. Zenodo, Open Science Framework, Figshare, and other general purpose repositories are designed for researchers to post data, figures, software, and other materials in support of their publications. At these repositories, researchers can post a data set linked to one or more preprints in our publications and receive a unique DOI for the data set. Accordingly, content submitted to general purpose repositories undergoes very little or no quality control prior to posting. And finally, unlike preprint servers, postings to general purpose repositories are not included in indexing services such as Google Scholar. In this video, we've covered the basics of quality control at preprint servers. We learned that anyone can upload a preprint, that preprint servers have different requirements for what can be submitted, that submitted preprints undergo a brief quality control screening process, and have specific mechanisms for withdrawal in the case that major issues are discovered. And finally, we learned that preprint servers are distinct from general purpose repositories. Thanks a lot for listening.